It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury, and Mr. Henry Hazlitt, contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable James A. Farley, former United States Postmaster General. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Well, Mr. Farley, you've established a remarkable position as a prophet, so I'm going to begin right away by asking you the $64 question, who's going to win the election? Well, at the present time, I would say the Governor Stevenson is going to be elected. Well, what do you think? Why do you think so? Well, in the first place, I have, a very, have every reason to feel that he's going to carry all the southern states, despite all the gossip and talk that goes on. I feel that he should carry uh, Maryland and West Virginia and Missouri, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada, and Rhode Island. And in the light of the present situation with... Uh, uh, Governor Dever running in Massachusetts for re-election and Jack Kennedy running against Lodge, that's a strong ticket up there. They ought to carry Massachusetts for the Democrats. Now, all he needs is a couple of more states, New York and Illinois or Michigan or California. What will be the principal issue as you see it in the campaign? Well, I think prosperity will be the principal issue. Uh, down through the history of American politics, it's been shown that we very rarely vote an administration out of office when people are working. and. Over 62 million people are working now, and it has been stated in the newspapers recently that they expect that there'll be over 63 million people working next October or November, then. That being a fact, that should be helpful to the party in power. It always is. It hasn't got its other side, the inflation, uh, the disappearance, the rotting of the dollar, the fact that the government bonds only have the purchasing power of one half of what they had in 1939 and so on? Yeah, that has an effect. That's bound to have an effect. But that, uh, in my judgment, that has an effect on uh, what might be termed a smaller segment of the population, of uh, the laboring man who is working in any phase of labor's activities. He, isn't, uh, he doesn't look into that inflation situation where he's disturbed about the prices and he's disturbed about his take-home pay. But the fact that he's working well, isn't his fit. wife worried about the yes, prices she has to Yes, of course, she, of course she's pay. working, but uh, of course she's worried about the prices. Uh, women in all fields of activity are worried about the prices. The fact remains, if the man is working and has a steady job, so to speak, he isn't as concerned as he would be if he was without a job. Well, I take it then, Mr. Farley, that you think the campaign song, uh, Don't Let Them Take It Away, is a rather apt one. Well, I thought it was rather catchy. I, I enjoyed it in the Chicago Convention. As a matter of fact, if I had anything to do with uh, running the Democratic National Committee or the campaign itself, I, I would use that song. I think it's rather effective. <laughs> well, at, at uh, any rate, it's catchy. Well, sir, I think the big development uh, at this moment is the one by which uh, a good many people seem to think that General Eisenhower is slipping. Uh, the best evidence of that is that the Scripps Howard newspapers have come out editorially and warn the general that he is slipping and some of the people who want to support him are, are a little bit disappointed. Now, number one, sir, as a political realist, do you think that's true? Do you think that Eisenhower is slipping? Well, I've had a sort of a feeling that the general has been slipping from the time he was nominated. Uh, the situation in the Chicago Convention, the bitterness that was engendered there, uh, caused the Taft supporters in, in a large measure to feel unfriendly, and I, I, don't, I don't see any evidence that that uh, situation has been clarified. We had that difficulty in 1932. There was a lot of bitterness, but we made every effort as quickly as we could after the convention was over to bring all the dissident elements, so to speak, into the party. Well, well you're not in the business of giving advice to the Republicans, Mr. Farley, but what do you think that the General the Eisenhower it. should do if he wants to stop slipping? Well, I, uh, uh, he's surrounded by men who are assumed to be competent political advisors, and it would appear to me that it's up to them to survey the situation and to take the steps to arrest the situation, I think, that is evident to every uh, competent political observer. Well, you have so many friends on both sides of the fence now, Mr. Farley, that I think you can afford to be a bit objective. Now, as a political realist, why is Eisenhower uh, slipping? 
Well, he hasn't spoken out, I don't think, for want of a better way to put it. Uh, he's uh, fiddled around with some of these issues. I see Nixon is for McCarthy, for instance, one day, and he's against them the next. Uh, I don't think that the general has taken what might be called a prosecutor's position or a definite stand on many of these issues. Uh, uh, and I think uh, uh, many of his supporters and those who were wholeheartedly for him and still are, uh, are disappointed in the way in which the campaign has been conducted. Now, I don't know who's to blame for that, and it isn't for me to be telling the Republicans how to run their show. I'm trying to be honest on my answer to the questions here tonight. Uh, it's your belief that that trend is going to continue and that Stevenson will get stronger and Eisenhower perhaps will get weaker as the I campaign develops? I would think develops. that Stevenson would get stronger, and I'll tell you why. Stevenson will have, as, uh, as evidence now by what has happened, uh, he will have a, a large segment of the labor population working for him. Uh, those, uh, those labor organizations are very effective and they, they work hard and they'll do a good job for Governor Stevenson, the Democratic ticket. I was sort of a feeling that uh, the colored vote uh, will in a large measure stay within the Democratic ranks. Now there may be some uh, some people who uh, don't, would disagree with that statement, but I think it can be said without fear of contradiction that greater gains have been made. Do you, well, how folks. about the nomination of Senator Sparkman and his known position pretty much against FEPC? Well, I don't think that that will have a very serious effect because uh, the Republican attitude has been more or less wishy-washy and, uh, and I would believe that the colored people, knowing the progress that has been made under Democratic rule for the last 20 years, would have every reason to expect that they'd receive the same kind of aid and just assistance and certainly more likely to receive it there than they would under a new administration. Now, that's just an observation of mine in answer to your question. There was some feeling, uh, Mr. Farley, uh, at the Democratic Convention. And I believe there was some feeling that maybe you had a part in it. And that, uh, that, that you, Stevenson, in nominating Stevenson, and the way it was handled, Stevenson may have alienated some of the left. Now, uh, some of the extreme left su supporters of the Democratic Party. Now, do you think that that may be true, that uh, some of those people may be a little less than well, enthusiastic? I'll, I'll answer your question by asking a question. Where can they go? <laughs> well, well, they can stay home, can't they? Yes, well, they, they can, but in my judgment... at all. No, I don't think so. I think in a large measure uh, they will stay within the Democratic Party. Well, now, what about on the other side? Uh, where can those that extreme right go? Colonel McCormick says he's just not going with Eisenhower. Well, there isn't any doubt that some of that element, the same as some of the element on the left side, on the Democratic Party, as you refer to, are likely to stay home. But I think a larger percentage of the Republicans are likely to be affected than the Democrats. There isn't any doubt that there was an extreme bitterness developed in the Chicago d Convention, and the Taft supporters are certainly, in, in, to some degree at least, sitting on their hands. I think in large measure it will depend on what the Senator Taft does. But as a matter of fact, it isn't as much of what Senator Taft does as what the county chairman does and the district workers. Now, how seriously are they affected? And how seriously have they been affected in the Middle West, let's, uh, for instance, as a result of Senator Taft's failure. Well, Mr. Farley, on August 11th, the Gallup poll came out with a report which gave Eisenhower 47% of the vote and Stevenson only 41. Now, don't you take those figures very seriously, or do you think they're going to evaporate by Election Day? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't like to say anything about polls, but... Uh, all you have to do is go back and figure out what happened in 48. They didn't hit it too well, well then. Well, the prognosticators went wrong, too. They all went the wrong. Test. They all went wrong. I don't want to uh, say anything unkindly about the poll now. But regardless of the poll, uh, basing it on the picture as I see it, I, I believe the Democratic organization will function as an organization over the country better than the Republican organization. And I have a sort of a feeling that the farm vote are not going to leave the Democratic Party in large numbers because, as the fellow said, whether you like it or not, the farmers have made greater gains under the Democratic administration in the last 20 years by virtue of the subsidies than they ever made under the protective tariff well, afforded by the Republicans. Didn't now, the farm vote more or less go to the Republicans in 1950? Oh, 19, well, I in don't the congressional about, election well, in 1950? Well, they shift in the congressional election, but in, the, in, in 48 they 
It was amazing the yeah. way Mr. Truman got those farm states. Now, Mr. Farley, you have such a well-grounded uh, reputation as a prophet. I'm sure that our viewers want to get once again uh, just your prediction across the country. Now, you think the entire South will remain for Stevenson? Oh, I would say so, yes. And you think border states such as Maryland and Missouri, and Kentucky? Uh, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, our Oklahoma, Arizona, New Mexico, Nevada. I, I'm not prepared to say what would happen in Washington or Oregon. I would be inclined to think at the moment that Washington should be in the Democratic column and also Montana. Uh, I take it you think that uh, I, that the uh, Democrats will carry the House. I would, oh yes, I would think now, as of now, the Democrats would carry the House and, and, and not have too much difficulty in carrying the Senate. You mentioned the Massachusetts race a moment ago. Uh, there's a lot of interest there, and uh, Mr. Kennedy was on this program recently. Uh, how do you think that Senate race will go between Kennedy and Lodge? Well, as of the moment, I would think that Kennedy will defeat Lodge. Uh, Lodge has been very strong down through the years. He's been strong in what might be termed the Irish voters. His father, or grandfather in other days, or his, the old senator, I've forgotten what the relationship was. He was very strong in Massachusetts. Uh, but I, I think that the present senator has lost a lot of ground, uh, particularly during the convention of the Senate. And young Jack Kennedy was a World War, War hero, and he's well and favorably known. And uh, I'll be terribly disappointed if Kennedy doesn't defeat Lodge. And I take it then you mean you expect Massachusetts to go for Stevenson, too? I would too. say so as of the moment. Mr. Farley, I'm sure that our audience very much appreciates these statements from you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guest this evening was the Honorable James Farley, America's most distinguished political prophet. The traditional presentation gift to symbolize achievement honor or respect is a fine watch and the watch of highest preference is Longines, the world's most honored watch. No other watch has become so much a symbol of achievement. Longines watches are made to a single high standard of quality, the unique Longines standard that has won for Longines watches 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals and highest honors for accuracy from leading government observatories making Longines, in fact, the world's most honored watch. The Longines watches, now at your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler agencies, represent 86 years of fine watchmaking experience. They're unmatched for superiority of construction and for beauty of appearance. And yet do you know that you can buy and own, or buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. Longines, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866. Maker of watches of the highest character. I invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longine Whitnor Watches. Spine-tingling danger on the CBS television network.